Hey everyone, hope everyone's doing well and staying safe these days. Want to actually go ahead and do yet again another motherboard unboxing and review as well too. A little bit of a BIOS overview as well since everyone likes to see that. This one is actually the ASUS TUF, T-U-F, I like to call it TUF, Gaming B550 Plus motherboard. This wonderful piece of hardware right over here. Let's go ahead and get this uh, out of the box. It already is, but let's go ahead and take it out again. Get it installed and see how it works. Before I get this motherboard unboxed over here, I just want to go ahead and just demonstrate this uh, little sticker here. It basically just says that this particular motherboard's BIOS has already been updated to support fourth generation Ryzen CPUs. That's basically your Ryzen 5000 series right over here. They basically just toss this sticker on, probably right over the little uh, label that said um, Ryzen 3000 series uh, ready to go. So let's go ahead and open this up here. Here's our motherboard. Go ahead and remove that. Actually, might be easier just to just take this entire box out. Even though it feels a little flimsy. Actually, it kind of is. Let's go ahead and take a look here. This particular motherboard does not have the back shield I.O. Uh, plate built onto the board. So you do have the traditional plate that you'll have to put onto the case itself before actually installing your motherboard. So that's right there. Looks like you do have about two SATA cables, if I'm correct. Little certificate over here, just saying that this particular board has passed a lot of things. Hmm, certificate of reliability. Very, very interesting. They probably should have put that um, sticker for the uh, 5000 um, series uh, support over here, but it looks like this actually related to something else. Of course, here's your manual. Definitely much thinner than other motherboard manuals I've actually um, used before. And of course, if you built already a couple of uh, systems in your lifetime already, in your experience, um, basically, you'll probably only be looking at this just so you know the location of your front panel connect connections. Right over here, we do have a little CD DVD here with drivers. Not many people actually use it if you do have an optical drive. And of course, some uh, really popular with ASUS these days, just a couple of little stickers over here that you can actually put on cases. I believe it doesn't look like it actually has uh, stickers here for individual cables themselves, but you know, pretty nice here. This one's actually coming out a little bit, no big deal. And just a regular sheet here with, um, looks like support for your um, AMD Ryzen CPU. Looks like they probably just tossed this little piece of paper in here just saying that it does support 5000 series. And of course some um, NVMe uh, M2 drive SSD screws over here as well too. Additionally, there seems to be another little container section over here in the cardboard. Let's go ahead and take this out and I'm pretty sure I know what this may be. And it definitely is. This is actually, this motherboard here does have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. This is basically your Wi-Fi antenna right over here, which will actually screw onto the board, which I'll go ahead and demonstrate to you in just a moment. Looking at the back of the box here of the motherboard, it does actually tell you a lot of things. It does have obviously um, USB connections, uh, all the connections in the back, even though you do have a visual of that here. Oh, they actually don't. Well, that's, well, maybe a little tilted one over here. Some other little things they actually do mention is uh, AI nose canceling microphone. Pretty interesting. Dual heat sink for the M2 drives. Obviously, a lot of people still have questioned the use of heat sinks unless it's actually built onto the M2 drive. And of course, this motherboard does have a LAN connection that's 2.5G. Uh, faster than giga, uh, gigabit, definitely becoming much more popular. It looks like it's actually a real tech one if I actually see her correctly. Yep, that is. That's actually becoming much more popular these days over the uh, generic Intel, Ethernet, and giga, gigabit um, connections you actually do find on maybe motherboards. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get this motherboard out of the fancy static sleeve. And here she is, pretty interesting scent coming out of that particular uh, board when taking the board out of that bag. Actually, it's uh, pretty strong. I did actually note that in another review of another ASUS motherboard I did actually do as well too. So this is the board right over here in all its glory. Try 
Try to get a little uh, view all around. And let's actually start looking at some connections here. Taking a look on the bottom of the board here, it looks like here's your connection for your onboard audio connection. Once uh, there's actually more for your front panel, and I do believe some uh, sound cards, uh, dedicated sound cards, do have this connection as well too. So you can actually go ahead and use uh, front speaker, microphone, and other connections you may have on your case. Over here, it looks like we do have a front panel Thunderbolt connection here, and uh, pretty interesting to actually see that. And uh, I've seen that more Asus motherboards. And of course, I do know that connection has become a little bit popular, so definitely a welcome thing to actually see that here. I'm not sure what this connection is. It looks like some sort of comm um, connection here, plastic surrounding as well, too. Do, we do actually have multiple, um, looks like uh, LED connectors. Looks like a, a four pin and two three pins as well, too. So it's just something to keep in mind. This board does have a lot of connections for basically your LED connections, whether inside the case or all around as well too. A little further here, we do have a couple more connections, including a four pin fan connection right over here, one of many, and I'll definitely be able to point out some more in just a moment. Over here, we do have some old traditional USB 2.0 uh, front panel connections here. If you actually want to make use of them, some people definitely still do. Another little chassis fan connection here, another four pin. And of course, your connections here for your front panel, um, basically your power buttons, your reset button, speaker, if you still even have a PC speaker, if you actually still have one. Um, some of them actually connect basically just like a little speaker on four, uh, four pin connections here that instead of actually using on the case. So some people actually still have them. If not, you can always uh, get one off uh, online somewhere, maybe rip one out of uh, like a very early 2000 C or 2000 series computer. Moving a little further on the right side, we do have six SATA ports. Well, M2 drives are becoming more popular and these are starting to be less, more, um, less often used, especially when optical drives are not really popular these days, but this board does have six connections. Even uh, higher tier motherboards have actually been removing um, SATA ports, so you'll find, even find four or even two. Right over here, we do have a USB 3 um, connection over here. Now, just one little thing I want to note, this is actually not a USB 3 um, type C connection. This motherboard is actually lacking that connection. There are definitely converters that will definitely convert this over to be able to connect such a connection, but you know, it does require an additional adapter, so just something to actually keep in mind there. Of course, here's your 24 pin motherboard connection for power, very old fashioned, right over here. Previously it used to be 20 uh, pin, like uh, something like this. And then they add the additional four pins right there. Let's go ahead a little further. And up here, obviously you do have your four DIMM slots for memory, obviously uh, color coded for dual channel. And of course, over here, it looks like we do have yet again, another four pin LED connection. And of course, two four pin fan connections right over here. I'm pretty sure one of them is probably your CPU fan connection. A little further over here, we do have an one eight pin CPU power connection. Usually there's an additional four pin or even another eight pin here. That's really more for overclocking use is all you actually need if you do not plan to overclock. And moving along over here, you do have your connections on the rear of the computer. It looks like a couple of USB ports. Looks about seven of them plus one for USB type C. So even though you do not have the front panel connection for type C, you do have one cable on connection right over here for type C. Here are your Wi-Fi connections, the antenna I just demonstrated a little earlier. And of course, if you're planning to use a CPU with an onboard GPU on it, a Ryzen, or basically an APU, you'll be using these connections over here. It looks like one HDMI, one display port. And of course, you do have your traditional audio connections, and of course, one optical connection right over here. Just trying to see if there's anything else I missed. Looking on the board itself, you do have your main PCI Express X16 slot for your video card up here. This is your main generation four PCI Express slot, just something to keep in mind. And of course, right above it is your main um, M2 slot for generation four speeds. You can always use a regular generation three or earlier M2 drive in here, but obviously if you want the max speed, this is your ideal port right over here for that drive. You do have another one here being also being covered by a nice little heat sink. I'm sure these are interchangeable to some degree. 
Um, but this obviously will be running at Gen 3, so just keep that in mind if you do have a Generation 4 SSD. Same thing goes with the other slots here. That's why they're color-coded a little bit. This slot will not be running at Generation 4 speeds. Over here, you do have your chipset heatsink right under here. There's no fan on the 550 base chipsets, as far as I can tell. And of course, further up, you do have your CPU um, socket right over here, AM4 socket. I'm pretty sure next generation Ryzen CPUs are probably swapping over to AM5. So here's your traditional AM4 socket. Well, basically that's your nice little overview, physical overview of the motherboard. Let's go ahead and, didn't mean to actually hit that board that hard. Let's go ahead and get this board inside a case and turn it on. This uh, system up and running, motherboard's been installed, CPU, memory, connections made. So here we are in the BIOS. First boot up. So we do actually have um, very familiar options here. This is actually your easy mode in the ASUS BIOS over here. Basically giving you a good uh, summary of uh, all settings right now and the other little details. Um, you do see up here your full name of your motherboard. Obviously this, uh, this is a Wi-Fi version. BIOS version as well too. The CPU is currently installed. 
the frequency that the CPU is currently running and of course your total memory and the frequency the memory is running at. Just below you do have basically your four DIMM slots and which uh, memory chip is actually occupying that particular slot. In this case, we're using two DIMM slots, two memory chips, so you see those two chips here. Just below, you do have the DOCP option to go ahead and select uh, some overclocking profiles connected with your memory chips. And just below, you do have a very interesting, cute little option here. The faster the uh, RPM on the fan is, you do see the little icon here indicating the fan's actually spinning a little faster, which is uh, pretty neat. Uh, the other one's obviously stagnant, means the fan's currently not connected at all. You do have one here, uh, fan connection here is specifically made for water cooling and radiator pumps as well too. Obviously over here you do have um, your current setting for the CPU fan, basically the thresholds that will trigger the faster speeds and RPMs. And if you go ahead and click on QFAN here, you can actually go ahead and observe those particular graphs for each one, and this can absolutely be changed. Just below, you do have a couple of little predetermined settings here to actually make one go a little full speed. Manual, obviously, so you can go ahead and drag these things yourself, as you can see here. Or you do have some options here for silent, turbo, and of course, uh, additional options. Once you actually do hit the apply button, I think those fan, speed, fan speeds will actually start to kick in. Up here, you also do have the option to switch between DC or PWM, 3-pin, 4-pin fans as well. So go ahead and hit Escape. Just in the middle, you do have your current CPU temperature, currently at 53 degrees Celsius. I'm actually just looking at the uh, CPU code to make sure that I didn't forget to actually connect the CPU fan. Everything's looking okay. There's actually one time I was actually um, putting back uh, my second system back together and I completely forgot to connect the CPU fan. I didn't even know that my CPU fans were hitting above 65 degrees Celsius. And uh, that is, uh, <laughs> I only started to notice when I started to see some stuttering and performance issues. Over here, you do have your motherboard temperature. Big difference between the motherboard temperature and the CPU, almost uh, about 35 degrees Celsius there and the current voltage for the CPU as well too. Again, this entire window here is giving you some good summary of all the settings currently being used right now on the system. And of course here under Easy C System Tuning, you do have the option to go ahead and just knock the system into basically an overclocking setting on the fly if you want to between normal and of course this uh, ASUS Optimal. Just below you can actually go ahead and choose your boot priority I do not currently actually have any devices connected to this uh, system at this time, but if I had anything connected to SATA or an SSD um, M2 drive installed in the M2 slot demonstrated earlier, you will absolutely see those over here. You even do have an optical drive or a USB thumb drive. This will appear here as well too. And of course, you'll also see this under here under storage information. You can also click on the boot menu here to actually go ahead and select uh, basically which drives are going to be prioritized as you actually have them. Obviously, it's just telling me that there are no boot devices available at this time. Basically, a quick little summary uh, rundown of the easy mode setup. I'm going to go ahead and click on advanced mode, so just hit the F7 key. And now you actually do have much more advanced settings here that many uh, hardware enthusiasts and PC builders are definitely much more accustomed to. Um, we do actually have basically very uh, similar information from earlier, a little bit more in detail. Obviously, we do have um, BIOS version, BIOS state. You do see this is actually dating back to late 2020. So uh, definitely quite a bit out of date now. It's been over a year and a couple of months. Uh, it absolutely does support the fourth generation Ryzen CPUs, but you probably can get a little bit of more performance updates and, and of course bug fixes with a newer version of the BIOS. So obviously it does give you some more details here, basically your CPU information. Go ahead and change the language here if you'd like as well too. And of course some other, uh, basically your date, system time, and of course a little option here for security. You can actually absolutely go ahead and set a password to access and make changes to the BIOS itself. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit escape. Under my favorites, if you go ahead and click here, you do have um, some uh, favorite options here that do show up. If you actually want to go ahead and customize this, basically if you want to change uh, which options immediately show up here, which is obviously your choice, you can go ahead and click on the My Favorites button up here. 
And definitely you can go ahead and remove your current favorites, which are right over this area. Go ahead and remove them and go ahead and select learn option on the right on the left side here and just basically have it in the favorites. Once those changes are made, you will definitely see it here now in the favorites area. So this is pretty useful. If there's a setting here, you continuously go into the BIOS. Moving along, you can actually go ahead and click on the AI tweaker where you absolutely do have some overclocking options here. Actually, this is gonna be the area where you actually will see the most. Your current uh, frequencies for memory and CPU and other options are actually up here. You can go ahead and actually uh, go ahead and select some manual uh, or auto options as well too. Bear in mind, this is actually settings that will go ahead and change your CPU settings beyond the uh, stated frequency. And uh, you can absolutely cause damage to any hardware here if you don't know what you're doing. So definitely take caution here. Obviously we do have some pretty relevant uh, changes that you can make here, such as voltage and other options. So be really careful, obviously. One, op one option I do absolutely like changing here, since I do know the memory here is currently in the wrong frequency, you can actually go ahead and select the correct frequency if I want to. I can go ahead and just select 3000. And there you go. A quick reboot will absolutely go ahead and have this memory running at the frequency you just chose. If there's any issue here, I believe the board will probably just boot up back into the BIOS and give you an error message saying that it failed to post at the changes you just made. Clicking on the advanced option here, you do have some other options with uh, device configuration, SATA configuration, CPU configuration, and a bunch of other options here. I can actually just go through a, a couple of them, show you some uh, options here. Obviously on the CPU option, you do see all the CPU options that um, show up here. Um, very interesting. I believe one of the CPU options will probably even be related to virtualization if you plan to run VMs on the system. SATA options, obviously AHCI, of course RAID if you plan to be doing RAID option, and some other options if you actually want to change a particular SATA port to become a hot swappable hot plug connection. Onboard devices configuration. This is basically you, act, you will actually go ahead and make some changes here. And of course, disable particular options uh, such as the Wi Fi, um, audio controller if you plan to use a separate sound card, and other options as well, too. You do see uh, here's the Wi Fi controller. If you plan not to use it, you can always absolutely disable it. And you even have the option to disable the Bluetooth controller as well, too. Again, on APM, you do see some options here regarding to some power saving options. Some options here for your PCI subsystem. Some USB configuration options. If you actually want to change some legacy or just set it to auto USB support. Network option here, pretty, uh, pretty small one. And of course, some HD, SD, SSD options here regarding smart information, basically the little system that tells you that a failure is imminent and uh, the system has actually been around for some time. Do have that option here. NVMe configuration, some more configuration you'll have, you'll see here if there is an NVMe drive connected. I believe I'll probably even give you some information and of course what uh, PCI 3 or 4.0 speeds are actually running. And below here are some further options for AMD overclocking. Obviously, any overclocking setting, just bear this in mind. You, you may absolutely damage hardware if you don't know what you're doing. I'm going to go ahead and click on monitor, and I believe this is where you can actually go ahead and control some uh, temperature settings, fan speed settings, um, thresholds here that will trigger a fan to start increasing its speed, and of course some other options here as well too. If you do have a fan connected, obviously I do have these two case fans, so you'll see their options here and their current RPM. You can also go ahead and change some uh, voltages here as well too, and of course you do have the Q fan configuration that I demonstrated a little bit earlier as well. On the boot configuration, you do have some options for boot configurations. Obviously, if you want fast boot, um, show a logo here when it's posting, and some other options as well too. 
CSM. Obviously, if you plan to have the system no longer boot into legacy, this may actually make your system boot up a little faster, depending on what video card I believe you currently have. And of course, some options here regarding secure boot, something to keep in mind if you're planning to be using uh, Windows 7. Obviously, you probably won't want to turn this off, and of course, Windows 10, and now Windows 11 as well. And of course, finally, under tool, you do have some options here for flashing, basically to go ahead and update your BIOS to a new version, some uh, secure race options, user profile options, and of course, this Armory Crate, which is actually something specifically from ASUS. If this is actually enabled, you can go ahead and install your operating system and download the particular app from the from Microsoft Store, I believe. And once you do have that installed, you can go ahead and actually have the app install, download and install all the drivers for your particular motherboard. If this is an option you're planning on to use, you just want to be old school and install everything yourself, kind of like RM, go ahead and disable this. All right then, that's pretty much a pretty good rundown of the entire system here. Going back to main, down here you do have a couple little buttons. If you click on the last uh, modify, you'll see a little checklist of all the changes you've actually made. Surprisingly enough, the little change I made here to the memory speed frequency uh, is actually not showing up here. Maybe I just forgot to actually apply it. And of course, you have option to go ahead and switch right back to easy mode and set up some hotkeys. So very th somewhat thorough uh, description here and uh, viewing of the entire BIOS system for this particular motherboard. Very similar to other BIOS uh, that I've actually reviewed for ASUS motherboards. And of course, uh, very similar settings that you probably can be um, seen on other brand motherboards as well too. Finally, here's a quick look at the motherboard in use here. You can actually absolutely see there's some LED colors on the bottom part right over here on the right side. And with other Asus motherboards, I've actually noticed that actually stays on even if the computer is actually off. So I'll go ahead and demonstrate that to you in just a moment. And of course, I just see basically the RGB on the cooler here, the Ryzen cooler. And of course, some LED lights coming out of the memory chip right over here as well, too. I'm trying to see a little deeper if I do see any other lights, but I don't think so. Let me go ahead and just um, turn this off here real quick. You will see the lights actually stay on down here at the bottom. I, do ha I have actually noticed this occurring with other ASUS motherboards. Not really a big deal. Uh, but just something to keep in mind if uh, energy saving is on your mind here, even though I'm pretty sure this hardly even takes up one or two watts. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this right back on. And you'll see the lights actually turning on here as well. Do have those little four light indicators right around here. Um, they'll absolutely tell you if there's something going on here. Obviously, you see it's basically processing through. If one actually stays red, there's something wrong either with your CPU, memory, video card, or another option as well too. Well, that's pretty much it for this review. I really hope you enjoyed it. Definitely shoot a like and subscribe if you enjoyed what you saw. And of course, as always, let me know if you have any quick questions or comments regarding this particular motherboard. Do you actually own it? I mean, let me know your experience. And definitely would be more than welcome and happy to hear from you. Thanks again for watching, everyone. And as always, stay safe.